Hi again, everybody. We are up and running on the latest edition of Grilling the Birds. It is brought to you by Inside the Birds. And that esteemed gentleman right there is Trey Thomas. I'm yes. Derek Gunn. And Trey, you played this game at the highest level for a long time. You have yes, been I did. Watching, yes, I did. You have been watching this game at the highest level for a long time. Tell me, when was the last time you went into a series of games saying to yourself, Instead of they have a fighting chance to win, I just want to see how close they keep the game. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've ever gone into a game like that. You know, not even my rookie year. You know, at least even my rookie year when we were 3-13, and 13, we finished the season 3-13, and 13, I right. always just went in like, hey, let's go give it a shot. Let's see what we can get, you know. What I'm saying? But this team right here, it just seems like they go into the game like, hey, you know what, can we get close? You know, I don't know how close we're going to get. And it doesn't help that the coach keeps building in these excuses. So anytime you start off and say, hey, man, we've dealt with a lot of injuries. You know, we, we, you know we, we've had a lot of guys get hurt. And, you know, and this is what's going on. We don't have any consistency because of some of this and all of this other stuff. Well, when you give a built-in excuse like that, your teams are, that's going to reflect on your team. Well, I want to sit here and say, because I've been watching for this closely, to see if players are quitting, you know, because as we've discussed and as we both know, being around this game for a long time, when, when seasons go like this, all of a sudden you hear rumors about players basically have cashed it in. I can't honestly say I see players quitting. I, what I see is more mental errors, just physical errors which is still mind-boggling considering even though you didn't have a training camp you're 11, 12 weeks into a season and you're making mistakes you should have made in weeks one and two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's undisciplined play. You know, you got, a, you got a bunch of guys that's out there trying to do too much. They undisciplined play. Are guys going to quit? No, they find other ways of doing it. You know, uh, when, it's, when it's crunch time, you see certain guys on the sideline instead of being out there on the field. Uh, you know, and then you start having guys look built in excuses for it. Now, you know, because you had Lane Johnson. Now, I'm not saying that he quit, but, I mean, he kind of was like, hey, you know what, I'm done. I can't, I can't keep pushing through this. Now, I'm pretty sure with his ankle being the way it is and Lane being a tough guy, you know, it must be really bad for it to be this way. But I'm pretty sure, like, if, if you're in playoff contention and that this team had a chance of making, it, making a big run, he would play through what he was dealing with. So when you have a team that's, that's, um, that's in this type of situation, guys aren't going to push through some of those injuries that you normally could push through. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just the reality of it. And, you know, um, even when you go into this game, you find out uh, a couple minutes before kickoff, a couple hours before kickoff, that JP has a dislocated broken toe. Now, mm -hmm. up until that point, it was turf toe. So now it was saying, okay, well, we're going to move him over to right guard. And then just a couple hours before the game, you say, you know what? Hey, just in case it looks goes to hell and it just looks awful, he had a separated and broken toe. Just in case. Just to give you that built-in excuse for if the play isn't up to par. So to me, you know, when you look at this team, it's like, man, Doug, you can't keep giving these kind of excuses because it's going to start it, – it, well, it is starting to show itself really big on your team. Are you saying there's some lying going on here? No, I'm not saying that there's lying. You're telling the truth. But the problem is you ha I mean, you're giving excuses. You know, it's, it, it, you know, it's like even when you had the race, you, you, have, you had kids. You know, when, whenever yeah. they fall, like if you play into it, if they fall and hit the ground and they play into it, yeah, they, they cry more. It, they cry more. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, as a parent, you always, man, get up, dust yourself off, wipe your tears, let's go. And then they're like, all right, they suck it up and, and go on about it. You know what I'm saying? But not this group, you like, you like, oh, you know, you hurt. Oh, that's so. And then they went, they just go even more. So that, now, that, sometimes you have to console them and hug them and stuff. You can't be hardcore all the time. You can't be. Man, listen. <laughs> My son, just a couple, last year, got his hand sliced open, right? And, you know, because they, they end up playing with knives, you know, and I had to take him to the emergency room. 
So and house you got over there? Hey man, you know, hey, listen, I got I got a house full of boys. I'm like, look, man, you know, if, did you cut yourself today? Good job. All right, you get a sticker. Good. All right, you hurt yourself. All right, good. What? So, what? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You we got to, we got to get some scar tissue. We trying to get you ready for the world. So <laughs> okay, so, all right then. So my son had his hand sliced open. I'm in the emergency room. At some at a certain point of it, you know, he couldn't get his hand numb. I mean, you know, mm. you got to get it stitched up. I mean, you know. And, and and he wanted to just he's he cursed one time and I was like whoa hey I need you to check that you know yeah. now I know it hurts I know it sucks but y'all shouldn't have been playing with knives I need you to suck it up now and, and how old is he he was sixteen at the time okay you know, he was old enough but I mean you know it, there was no playing into it you got to check that and you right. know because you can check your mindset and you can control what comes out you know and right. he, he right. sat there and he gritted his teeth and took it and but you know. To me, I, when you look at the squad, it's just like, man, it's too much playing into their feelings, playing into their emotions, instead of checking them and getting them to be what they, what you need them to be. Get ready to go to war. I thought that our defense came to play, but offense, again, is just not where it is. You know, uh, speaking of, let's go back to Lane Johnson for a moment, mm -hmm. because uh, this is up that we talked about the first week of the season. Why in the world did this man wait until two weeks before training camp to have that surgery when he should have had that surgery back in January? And, of course, here we are. He was never 100%. He missed a few games, all of a sudden to the point where he's talking about the ankle collapsing now. When you're 6'5", 320-something pounds, and your livelihood is, is pushing off, using your lower extremities for leverage to push, up, push off, to pivot, to turn, to run down, what did you expect to happen? Yeah, I don't know, you know, and I and I just go back to the whole timetable of this whole injury. You know, you saw earlier in the offseason where Chase Young had the video where he was jumping up on 40, 50 inches of plyo boxes. Uh -huh. So yeah. then Lane Johnson came back and was like, hold my beer. He went and jumped up on 40, 50 inches of plyo boxes. The whole time, he still needed ankle surgery at that time. Yep. Then you go back, you go back and uh, right after they had their first, um, their first padded practice in training camp, you had the video of Lane Jansen in, in, in the locker room, you know, so he's in the Because they got a day room. off, yeah. Because he got a day off the next day. He did, that was the last day that he practiced. So now, after that, so now you're dancing in the locker room, three days later, you having surgery on your ankle. So the whole timing of it was just off to me. You know, so where was all this ankle surgery when you were doing all of this other stuff? So the whole timing of this just was all, just did not set well for me. And, and, and I know Lane, and I say say what I say to him, say it in his camera. I say to him in his face what I see him. Yeah. You know, and that's why I feel like you know the timing of it just was not did not match up for me, and it didn't sit well yeah. for me. And I always knew that when Brandon Brooks got hurt and couldn't play this season. I knew that Lane was not going to make it through the season just because how much they depend on he he depends they they are like when they say that they are Forrest and but and Forrest Gump and Forrest and his name was they yeah. really are they are like peas and carrots you know yeah. they you know they Lane really leans on Brandon a lot and you know and I knew that once Brandon wasn't going to be here this season that Lane Jensen wasn't going to finish this season as well. Hey, speaking of Brandon Brooks real quick before we get back to the game, you know, we had heard rumors out there. There's a possibility that Brandon Brooks could come back no. at the end of this season. No. What, what, no you think I, he's going to come back now? I tell Brandon Brooks all the time, can we go watch a lot? You know, can we yeah. stay a couple houses? We can go stay a couple hours. I will block his driveway if yeah. I hear him talking about he's trying to come back. Why? No, yeah. no. I will go and flatten all of his tires and take – I would take one tire off of each of his cars and hide the lug nuts so that he cannot get to the facility if I hear that he's trying to come back and play. You need a full off-season off. Because, I mean, yeah. you know, he, he needs a full year to recover because he's such an animal. It's so dedicated to his craft. Yep. It's such a, you know, I want to be there for my team that he's going to push himself – to try to get back. And I know that uh, uh, fans would try to, hey, man, we need you, we need you. And he'll try to – because he wants to do it for you. But I'm like, man, no, man. I, I talk to him all the time. Like, man, there is no reason for you to come back right now, especially the way this season is going. Why? Go ahead and just take – You only, they only got five games left, but you're going to come back and play the last game? There's no need for that. 
Just yeah. go ahead. You, you're done. Fully heal up. Get you a full off season. So now you can come back and be the guy that everybody knew you were and know that you are next season with a full off season off, full year off to recover, and then now get stronger and come on back. Because now what you're going to come back, what, then what you're going to do with JP? Yeah. So if Brandon yeah. Brooks come back, what you going to do with JP? He can't play yeah. center. He can't, he can't play, play left right tackle. tackle. No. He can't play left tackle. He, no, Jordan yeah. Maialata there now. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Now, I, I, I would I would take his rim off his car and hide the lug nuts so he can't put the spare on. <laughs> Man, how do you how do you really feel? <laughs> you know what? When I played in Jacksonville, that yeah. was one of the pranks that a dude did to his teammate, one of our teammates. He came in, jacked his car up, took the uh, took the rim off his car, and took the lug nuts. And only let and he only put one lug nut on the on the hood. And then oh, just, no. yeah, the dude had to ride a bicycle for the rest of the week to practice, man. It was hilarious. But yeah, oh my goodness. Know. All right, let's get back back to the game at hand. Of course, uh, nobody in their right minds expected the Eagles beat the Seattle Seahawks because Russell Wilson has owned uh, the Eagles for years now. Uh, it was a close game, uh, a frustrating game, yet an entertaining game because the Eagles were right there and their chances. But they come out of the gate, their first series. They get a neutral zone infraction on Seattle, so now they have a first and five. Do they run the ball? No. Three straight passes? Now, I understand Seattle is one of the better run defenses in the National Football League, but going into the game, I wanted to know, was Seattle that good against the run because everybody was pass happy against the 32nd ranked pass defense of the league, or were they just that good against the run? But you have to test the interior, don't you? Yeah, but you know what? When you got a 3-4 defense, and that's the thing that's tough, man, because when you're going up against a 3-4 defense, man, it, they – it makes it tough for you to run on, you know, um, and, and these guys are stout up front. I mean, you know, so when you go back and you look at what was going on, our box score, <clears throat> and you see that we only had 14 rushes. Oh, my goodness. And, and six of them, five, what, five of them from the quarterback? Five of them were for the, from the quarterback. So, I mean, you only had eight rushes, oh, nine rushes out of your guys. I mean, come on. I mean, what in the world is that when you're saying, okay, you're trying to have a balanced game plan. You're trying to work to the advantage of your offensive line. But I guess you say, you know what? This is going – this is the 32nd worst uh, passing defense in the league right now. So let's see what we can get on them. But it seems uh, to me that when we go up against teams like that, guys that aren't supposed to be that good at something, then all of a sudden, like, there's like a, a, a miss that sits over the room for the other team and they breathe it all in and they become world beaters at whatever that was that they weren't good at. So now you go from 32nd in the league to now you playing like you top five, top ten against us. <laughs> there was like a little mist in there, and they, they all breathed it in, and then it's like, you know, with, uh, <laughs> what, what, what was that movie with, with Caesar? When they all were like the little experiments, and all he gave all the monkeys – the stuff so they can all talk and become like everybody else, you know. Oh, you're talking about Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes, yeah. Yeah. And they all got the green eyes, man, you know, so there I'm you like, go. What the heck you talking about Caesar and Mist and yeah. all this? What Caesar, the heck you talking yeah. about it? What? <laughs> right, man, I was any, trying to come it, to you. You're you throwing me for a loop here, man. You're right. all over the place right now. I'm all there. over the place. I'm all over yeah. the place. I got my okay. water, you know, I'm ready. Uh, speaking of water, welcome yeah, to the club. Yeah. All right, so for the life of me, I can't understand how Miles Sanders only gets six carries for 15 yards. I understand what you're saying about diff the difficulty of running against a 3-4 defense, but Miles Sanders is clearly your best offensive weapon, and basically you defuse him instead of finding ways for him to explode. It would only take – one or two explosive plays. I don't care if it's a swing pass to Miles. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a screen to Miles. You hit him, you keep hitting him and hit him. He only takes one. You know, I go back to that Eagles game against Cleveland. Eagles defense did a very good job against Cleveland's run game, right? Mm -hmm. But they kept pounding and kept pounding. What happens? Nick Chubb, all it took was one run. Yeah. 54 yards and Joe Osman got face planted and he's on everybody's highlight reel. I, for the life of me, I don't understand how you didn't find a way to feed this young man more. Yeah, you know, and, and I mean, it was there were a couple plays 
where you saw him kind of get a couple yards. You got some game, got game, game the little ground. But again, you know, they just abandoned it too quickly. And I mean, I think, I think also when you find yourself in third and 20, you know, you find yourself in first and, you know, first and 10, second and 10 all the time, or, you know, you all, they, they're never ahead of the downs. So you always feel like, all right, wait, hey, man, we got to pass it because we're, we're behind the chains. They never stay right. ahead of the downs, which makes it harder for them to stay consistent or to commit to the running game. And yep. then, you know, I guess sometimes Doug likes to show off, hey, man, we're going to try. They keep trying to force Carson into the situation where, you know, let's show off what you can do. Let's try to get you to shoot yourself out of your, your the, 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 the drought that you're in. Like when you have a three-point shooter that's, that's in a drought, you tell them, hey, man, keep shooting. Well, then, and that's what they're doing with this offense instead of just saying, you know what, man, we got to take this out of your hands. If something is wrong. We're not seeing – we're not getting through our progressions the right way. We're not – our passing game isn't where we need to be. Let's rely on the run a little bit more. They don't do it. They just refuse mm. to do it. You know, since Alshon Jeffrey has been back, Travis Fogum has been, like, in a witness protection program. Mm -hmm. Do you think do you think Alshon has taken away necessary reps for the, from this young man's development? Absolutely. And I keep trying to talk to people about this because the people – people get in their feelings – like, fans get in their feelings with it, and they like, oh, man, you know what, hey, such and such is better than the other player. Nobody cares who's better. It's right. all about who gets paid what. And that's what's going to determine your playing time. Yep. Nobody cares. Like, everybody's like, oh, my God. You, you know, just to get off, off of, you know, hey, uh, Jordan Maialata versus Jason Peters. Jordan, my, somebody tweeted me something about Jordan Maialata's pro football focus great. Nobody gives a damn about that. Nobody cares. JP is getting paid eight million dollars this, this for this year, or whatever his salary is. I don't even know how much he's getting paid, but whatever he's getting paid, he's getting paid multiple million dollars for this season right here. This is in yeah. college. This is you get paid, and when when people and whoever gets paid the most is going to play the most if they're healthy. And I think that you're seeing the same thing with Alshon Jeffrey because he's the money man. You're not going to pay all that money and just let him sit on the bench and chew on uh, sunflower seeds. Yeah, you got to justify happening. its existence. You're right. You got to yeah. justify its existence. But it's coming at the expense of a young man who is, I believe, is going to be one of your future prime weapons on this team. Yeah, well, that's going to be in the future. Right now, he get Jeff Al Shine is getting X amount of dollars. He's going to get those reps. You're going to pay him. You know, and, and that's just the reality of the NFL. All right, we're going to talk more uh, about this offense as we continue, but I want to flip the script just a little bit and go to a defensive moment. And the tone was set for this game before the kickoff of the opening game. Now, we find out after the game, and we'll talk more about this, uh, but DK Metcalf, of course, had a monster game against this Eagles defense and Darius Slay in particular. And we find out after the game that Metcalf had some motivation from, of all people, Eagles defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz. We find out that supposedly Jim Schwartz said to him before the game, hey, you know, I coached a guy named Megatron, and you're on your way, but you're not quite him yet. So here now is DK Metcalf explaining how it motivated him and Jim Schwartz trying to diffuse uh, on Wednesday. No, no, no. I wasn't trying to talk down to him. I was trying to to give him a compliment. Here are both comments. Coming home, uh, you know, a place that had a chance to draft me, but, you know, they didn't. So, um, you know, I got to make them pay. You know, I still got work to do. Um, one of the defensive coaches came up to me and it kind of made me mad that he was like, um, you know, I was I was in Detroit with uh, Megatron, but you're not there yet. Um, you know, in my mind, I'm not trying to be Megatron. I'm trying to be me. So, um, you know, it had, had a little uh, chip on my shoulder the whole game. Was that Jim Schwartz? Uh, yes, sir. Wow, I can't believe that's uh, play, paying a compliment to a player has become um, such a big thing. Um, I, I, before I even go into that, I want to I want to say everybody needs to know the high stand or the high esteem that I hold Calvin Johnson um, in. Calvin was not only the best player I've ever coached; he was the best player I ever coached against, and I think he's one of the great players in the history of the National Football League. Um, I had five years up close and personal of um, of every defensive coordinator's number one job was to stop Calvin Johnson. And 
ran every tricked up defense known to man, and he still made the uh, plays. And he was an incredibly hard worker, under underreported with him. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I tried to pay the guy a compliment, said I read his story, knew he'd overcome injury, heard he was a hard worker, and uh, said, you know, he reminds me a little bit of Calvin, and uh, congratulated him after the game. Um, you know, and, and, and at the time he told me, hey, thanks, coach, that means a lot to me. So, you know, if, uh, if, if anybody wants to take um, offense to being compared to who I think is one of the greatest players in the history of the National Football League, then, uh, yeah, if, if you get your motivation that way, then, uh, then fine. But um, we're not going to worry too much about that. All right, Trey, I understand what, what Jim Schwartz is trying to say. But you know the psyche of football players. And they're always looking for something to get them motivated and hyped for a game. Although I am a firm believer, when you make the kind of money you make as a professional athlete, you don't need any extra motivation. You don't need any wall clippings to get jacked up for a game. But for whatever reason, Jim Schwartz's comments seem to motivate DK Metcalf. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what in the hell was Jimmy (laughs) thinking. (laughs) I mean, what were you thinking? What? And why? Like, at what point in the game did you walk over to Metcalf and say, hey, man, you know what? I used to coach Calvin Johnson, but you're not him yet. Uh, you know, you remember Megatron? He's a beast. You ain't him yet. Why? Why? At the, at pre, at, during pregame warm-up, all the social distancing that needs to happen and all of this, you're going to run up to Metcalf and say something to him? Why? That you know, regardless of what was said, why? Why even do it? I wish as a player that a defensive coordinator would have came to me and said, Hey man, you know what? I used to coach all uh, Orlando Pace, Walter Jones. You know, you getting there, but you ain't there yet. I tell you what, I'm whooping whoever ass you put in front of me, I promise you that. Just because you felt necessary to come over here and say something to me. And that's exactly what Metcalf did. He said, oh, all he heard was, oh, I'm not Megatron. Now, he could have been saying, hey, man, you know what? Your stride is is gorgeous and amazing, you know, and you're built, but not like Megatron. That's all he all he, all he said, all he heard was, I'm not Megatron. Oh, okay. Well, I tell you what, Slay, you better have Slay out there. And you can tell that, man, that young man was not having it. Yep. Was not having yep. it. I mean, he came out there and he set the tone with his aggression. And I mean, there was one time where he and Slate got into a little kerfuffle. And I mean, oh, man, oh, 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 time out, time out. Uh, yes. Got into a what? A kerfuffle. What's that? Oh, that's a Judge Judy term. You know, I watch a lot of Judge Judy, and a kerfuffle. She uses that term a lot. And what is it? A kerfuffle, like an argument or so, a disagreement, a type of a fight or skirmish, you know, so a kerfuffle. Are you sure you're not making up these words? I would look it up in the Urban Dictionary whenever you get the chance. But uh, and I can't even begin to spell it. <laughs> I'm going to look up something that I can't even spell. Yeah, get close, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't spell it either. Get close. It'll, you know, spell check will get you, you know what I'm saying? But but a kerfuffle. So, so, so the word of the day is kerfuffle, all right? So they get into a little kerfuffle. And I mean, when, when Megatron, I mean, not, I mean, I'm sorry, Metcalf put yeah. hands on Slate, and it was like, he kind of shoved Slate, and it was like, Slate was like, well, damn, hold on, wait, you know? It, <laughs> I mean, because you know, he was like, well, damn, I didn't know he was that strong. You know what I mean? He jack, he, you he jack, look at that man's body and tell how strong he is. Exactly. I mean, you're looking at just somebody, the man is probably what 220, 230, 0% uh, body fat. Yeah. And I mean, when he put hands on Slay, he was like, man, get your hey, Slay was like, well, well, damn, hold on. And then he kind of got back at him, but it was just too late. The man had already put hands all on his chest. And then you saw Slay um, posted a video where his son was like, you know what? I got him, daddy. I whoop him. <laughs> Well, y'all better leave Metcalf alone. That man went out there, and I mean roasted them. And then, you know, and then Slay was like, I don't need no help. You know what? We need to get you some help. We're going to get you some help. Um, yeah, we need some safety over the top help over there. Even if you don't want help, yeah. we sending help. We're going to send help. Because, I mean, that man just dove all in your chest. You know what I mean? It was 
It was like <laughs> it was like the Matrix when the man went and dove in his chest, and I'm like, well, dang. Man, y'all get Metcalf off Slay like that. Don't let him hold Slay in like that. Y'all, wet and Fletcher, get your man, get him. Somebody help him. <laughs> Look, man, I'm still trying to get past the work of Fuffle. I'm yeah. still, I'm still messed up by that work. All right, uh, we're gonna continue because uh, the offense is definitely the problem in this game. But before we do, uh, we got a little promo to pass along here. Now, the gyms may not be full, but there's definitely no shortage of uh, matches uh, this college basketball season. For us fans, the college basketball powers that uh, that be have gifted us with a top-tier matchup between two powerhouses this weekend. Uh, Gonzaga and Baylor will be going toe-to-toe for what could be the nation's top ranking. Now, DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app, is bringing you closer to the action with these can't-miss offers. Now, DraftKings is giving all college basketball fans who sign up right now the chance to win $100 when you're when you are betting on either Gonzaga or Baylor to win their Clash of Titans. Plus, you'll get a deposit bonus of up to $1,000 when you sign up and use the promo code ITB. DraftKings Sportsbook has endless ways for you to bet from live betting to betting on your favorite players. They do it all. DraftKings is safe reliable and secure, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. So download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use the promo code ITB when you sign up for your shot to turn $1 into $100 when betting on either Gonzaga or Baylor to win. That's right, bet $1 to win $100. Use the promo code ITB during sign-up to take advantage of these great offers for a limited time only, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. All right, I want to go back to this offensive line. You had Matt Pryor starting at right tackle. Mm-hmm. You had broken toe Jason Peters starting broken at right and, guard. Broken and, and dislocated, dislocated yeah, toe. Dis- Jason so Peters. Is, said, is the what? toe pointing a different way? Like, is it is the toe like, you know, is it is you it, know, um, you 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 very insensitive towards offensive lineman, which I find shocking in some ways, considering that's part of your brotherhood. Well, because I played through everything. So, I, you know, I don't be with all that, you know. Did you play I, with toes I, pointing in different direction? No one has. Okay. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, you, you, know, could be uh, dis- you could be dislocated just hanging down or something. They put tape together, tape it together to hold it up. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just asking. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not being insensitive. I'm yes, just you asking. You make I'm asking. Is, offensive line. Yes, you is are. the toe? Uh, all right, you know what I'm doing. Yes, you are. Look, okay. Jason Kelsey is center. Isaac Samala, left guard. Jordan Malata. I, I left, don't be left. <laughs> are you talking to yourself in the third person again? Sometimes. Yeah, before, before, did somebody take your Fruit Loops this morning? Because you, no. you're a little bit more jacked up than normal today. What's I up? I feel good. I feel pretty good today. You do? Yes. Well, that's the, that's the Trey Thomas I want to see every week because, yes. man, you got me. It's just my chest hurt, you know. <laughs> Wait, open. Open ain't no heart attack. No, no, I mean. Nah, you should oh, be good. I'm good. Uh, anyway, this passed up offensive line, the 11th offensive line unit um, in, in, in 12 weeks of the season. You knew, let's start with that right tackle. I mean, mm-hmm. right guard. Uh, right tackle. One of them. Right tackle. Yeah. You right. knew it's a problem when you put Matt Pryor out there. Why in the world would you put Matt Pryor out there when he hasn't come close to playing like the Matt Pryor that played a rock-solid game against Seattle in that playoff game last year? I would have put the rookie Jack Driscoll out there before I put Matt Pryor out there. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I don't know why they went. I think Jack Driscoll was dealing with a, some type of knee issue as well. So I'm, I'm not sure quite how Wait, did healthy. You say, did you say knee or me issue? A knee, a knee, oh, okay. a knee. Well, I was gonna say, what is a knee? Yeah. Yeah. No, a knee. He, he has a knee oh. issue. Oh, a, a knee. Okay. A knee. Yeah. So he, uh-huh. I think he has a knee issue out there. So I don't know where if if you were gonna put him out there. But so you 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 said all right. You know? <laughs> so so because you know because you knees can be funny at times. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, you never know how, how to treat a knee. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, you know, it, so if Jack Drizzle has a knee issue, you're going to go ahead and go with Matt Pryor, who has no knees. 
So, you know, they say, well, all right, you know, hey, Matt Pryor, go have at it. But, man, it just – you just saw too many times, man, where these guys just – it was just technically bad. I, you know, I don't understand what happened so quickly with Matt Pryor's technique. When you go back and you look at his games against last year when he was at guard, his technique was way more sound. It, you know, I – it, it, he was shooting his hands. He stayed in balance. He wasn't taking false steps. I mean, you know, to the point where I did a breakdown on him, and I felt like, you know what, Matt, man, okay, if you keep playing like this, you could be something. You could you could pan out to be something. But then this year, his technique has gone downhill. So I don't know what the deal is. And then you know that you tried to send chip help his way, and they they still beat him with chip help. I mean, you, you brought in you, – you tried to bring receivers in a little bit to force the DNs into the body of the offensive tackles a little bit more. But even with chip help, those guys just went hell on a dove into his chest, and then now they worked the edge, and then there's a sack. One of those sacks came off of a running back coming in and giving you a chip. And it's mm-hmm. like you still get give up a sack, and it was just – it did not look good with Matt. You know, I just felt like, man, his, his technique – has really gone downhill. Now, you know, is it him or is it coaching? And that's the problem that I keep trying to, you know, say is that, you know, when it's technique, when your technique is going down, that's when I'm looking at coaching. But it's funny you would say coaching when Jeff Stoutland is known across the league as better as one of the better teachers among offensive linemen. I never thought that. Why? Now, see, I, I, you I are the first that. person. You are the first person I've ever heard say that, and, and and I'm glad you brought that up because what are we missing that leads you to say this? I never thought that Coach Stoutland, and, and I know that Coach Stoutland is is work, he's very well known and very respected. But when it comes to teaching pass protection, he does not understand it. You can see it, and when it comes to how this team, you, you okay under Coach Stoutland's watch. How many quarterbacks have you seen make it through a season since he's been here? I'm going to tell you. One. 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 2016, uh, Wentz's first year. That's the only time you've seen a quarterback make it through the entire season under his watch. Well, wait, wait. wait. Wentz made it through last year until the playoff game when he got knocked silly. Well, he got knocked silly. No, he didn't. in the playoff game. He had to come out of the Atlanta game. So he didn't make it. He had to but come he, out of it. He yeah, came but, back, but he got yeah, knocked yeah. out of it. Good, he got knocked out of that game. So okay. even still, you got knocked out of the game, and you had to come. You had McCown had to come in and make that drive going into halftime, and then you had Wentz come back. You know what I'm saying? He has not had a quarterback make it through the entire season yet, except for that one time in 2016. But okay. you know, and I'm just saying. But to me, he doesn't understand how to teach pass protection. And that's an important part of the game in the NFL level. Now, when you want to talk run blocking, mate blocking, combination blocks, oh, he got that down. But when it comes to teacher protection, oh, no, that's where you start seeing problems. And that's why you start seeing that little shoe set. Oh, that's like one of the big things that he likes to teach. And, I, and man, a shoe set will get you destroyed out there against an active defensive tackle. You start seeing guys that don't punch. More, Jordan Maialata didn't start doing as well until he started using his hands a little bit more. When he get out there and he saw, got his hands down, and you allow defensive ends to climb into your chest, all right, being three, you're going to have to play at 380 playing like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. When he got beat setting flat, when you go out there and you got a defensive end that beat him inside because he set too flat, that's coaching. So to me, I look at Coach Stout, I'm like, yeah, you know what? You, you are what you are, but to me, when it comes to teaching protection, he's not as good as that. I mean, you know, and he doesn't hold everybody to the same standard, you know, to me. And that's just what – when I keep seeing the same mistakes that's happening, I, I stop looking at the players and I start looking at coaching because, I mean, this team has been terrible at picking up games since day one. I mean, look at how many times they get beat with stunts. I mean, you know, it's like they get beat with a stunt and they're like, hold on, whoa, whoa. Whoa, who said that you guys could loop? Who, where, where is that in the rule book? I thought that everybody had to rush straight up the field. You're not supposed to loop. Time out, time out, penalty. He looped, he looped over there. 
I want to call a personal timeout and penalty on him because they ran a game. They act like when they get a stunt, they act like it's the first thing like it blows their mind. Like, oh my God, look at that. It's a stunt. It's simple TEs. A tackle in. It's simple. I'm like, how do you miss that? We are in the trenches with Trey. And while we are in the trenches with Trey, continuing on, uh, your guy, okay. Jason Peters, yes. playing at right guard. There were a couple of times where I saw JP go the wrong way off the snap. Yeah. He, uh, the couple of times he went towards Kelsey, trying to help Kelsey with a D tackle. All of a sudden, whether it was a D lineman, a linebacker, or safety, shoot right through his gap untouched. Come on, man. Again. Now, even if you never play right guard, you got to be able to see certain things. You, you're you a highly decorated offensive lineman. You need to be able to see certain things. But that's what's what, – what, what, did you drill it during the week? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that everybody yeah. like, yeah, he should see it. But did you drill it during the week? Did you give him that look during the week? And that's the problem I have with Coach Stoutland. Too many times you see guys get beat with stuff where it's like, why didn't you drill that during the week? You knew it could possibly happen. I mean, when JP got beat with a, a, I mean, a simple mic blitz coming up the middle, that's yep. your call linebacker. Kelsey's going to say, hey, Mike 54, Mike 54. That means that, hey, me and you, JP, we're working this triangle right here. This is us. So if that defensive tackle comes, you need to have eyes on the linebacker. Whoa, time out, time out. I didn't know they could do that. He's not supposed to do that. He's not supposed to do that. Can we run this play again? Can, you know, like, what are we doing? Like, that's simple stuff. When you had last week where JP got – when they ran a three-man game to the left, and yeah. JP, like, they and the defensive tackle come looping around, JP looking at him like, what, what, where'd he come from? You know, like, what, what, like, what are we doing? I'm just – I find that to me – when you keep seeing the same mistakes over and over again – I stopped looking at the players, and I start looking at the coaching. And to me, Coach Stout, I'm like, come on, man. You know, that's something that should be drilled. Day one. Day, and I mean, this is offensive line one-on-one stuff. It's not right. like it's some tricky, fancy blitz that's coming out there that no one has ever seen. I mean, we, I mean, since the beginning of time, everybody's been running games. Why are you not drilling this? But again, like when I was talking to Todd and Jack the other day, Juan used to drill us so much. On I, was, I was just going to bring up when you played for Juan Castillo. Yeah. What was he very thorough and making sure you had all the little details down to a science? Man, we got drilled on that stuff. I, every Wednesday and Friday was our, our pass heavy day. And I mean, right. we got drilled on that stuff all the time. Like, and you know how you, you've been to practices before yep. where it's like the, when the offense is up, the defense is down doing all yep. that stuff. And then when the defense is up, the offense is usually off doing their thing. Man, anytime we stepped off that field, it was no just getting the ticket in the knee and getting some water. Juan had us over there, hey, let's work these games. Let's do these games and all of the different little nuances and blitzes and everything that was going to go on. So that's why when we got to the game, yeah, you might beat us physically, but it's not going to be because you got you came with some regular – some scheme that we got, you know, that caught us off guard. You right, know, right. because, I mean, it was just drilled. To, to the point where we could switch stuff off without it even being any conversation going on. There's no talk that needs to happen just because we've drilled it so much. And you mm. just see these guys get beat with stuff that's so simple and basic. And it's like, why did you not go over this? What's up with your man, Jason Kelsey, and the snaps, man? I mean, now, now the coach – now, the coach said, well, you know, that's been a part of uh, Kelsey's history. Uh, he's known to snap a few high or to the right or to the left every now and then. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, if you're a rookie, I get it. But you've been in the league a long time. You mean to tell me you haven't corrected that problem in all these years? Well, really? You, built, you gave him a built-in excuse. So you built in the excuse for him. Hey, man, you know, hey, this is something that he's been dealing with for a couple times. We, we'll talk to him about it. You know, it's cool. Well, it's one thing when you got a bad snap here and there. But when you don't snap the ball, right, that's right. the problem. You know, mm. when, like you don't even snap the ball, and it's like, wait a minute, though. And then he looking like what? You know, you you can't move until I snap the ball. Well, Kelsey, man, I mean, everybody else moving. I mean, it's so <laughs> wrong with you today, man. It's like, something in the stars today. <laughs> Everybody else moving, man. I, you know, snap the ball. I mean, come, 
Dude, so he went from firing low rockets to like, you know what, I ain't even going to snap it today. I, I'm not going to even snap it. So he didn't even snap the ball. And then the next time he come up, and then he fired over his head. So I'm like, well, well you know, but they have a built-in excuse for it. Hey, you know, <laughs> he has a problem with that. So, you know, every now and then, you know, he we got to deal with that for him. So, yeah. All right, well, you never hold your players accountable. And that's what's wrong with this team. You have a bunch of not leaving, holding your guys accountable. I mean, what you, what you expect? What really? I mean, for real, like, what do you expect from this team if you don't hold everybody accountable? Jordan Malata, I thought he played a decent game. Yeah, yeah, I think he did good. I thought he played really well, you know. Uh, other for than a guy West, who's still learning how to play yeah. football. Yeah, because I just went back. I'm, I'm actually going to do a trench talk on this game. I haven't done it in a, for a past couple of weeks, but I'm going to put one together for this game. But I thought that Jordan Maialata actually played really well. I mean, he got beat with that one stunt that was yep. a sack, uh, the first yep. sack. And really, you know, again, you know, that that's something that needs to be drilled <clears throat> because the way he set, he kind of set out at an uh, angle. He wanted to drag for that three technique. They ran a delayed TE, but – you know, again, that's something that just needs to be drilled day in, day out. And he ended up getting beat on it. They gave up a sack. But, you know, that's just something that, again, I think that he's coming along. He's playing really well. He needs to use his hands a lot better, though. You know, he needs to use his hands a lot better because once he gets up against some more craftier defensive ends that are making him right. stop his feet and challenge him that way and come in and change direction on him, it's going to continue to be a problem. It could be a problem if he doesn't use his hands more. Uh, uh, the Seattle Seahawks defense came into this game with only 25 quarterback sacks. Mm -hmm. Their leading sacker was the safety, yeah. Jamal Adams, with five and a half sacks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Seattle loves the blitz. You know this going into the game. You know Jamal Adams is like a heat-seeking missile. He's coming down in the box. He's like a faster version of Malcolm Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Okay. This man all day disrupting plays, the stuff and run plays. Chasing Carson down from the backside. How did they not pick this man up? Because, you know, when you, you – because one of, one of his sacks came from he, – he brought it from the right side. I yes. think that he was supposed to pick the back up. I, I think he was supposed to pick somebody up. But he saw that the back was gone, so he just hit it. He was like, all right, now, it, it's hard to deal with a player that just blitzes when he's not supposed to, you know, because it reminds me of when uh, my rookie year when we played against Junior Seau. They are like, look. He gonna blitz whatever he want to. So you know, it's like you know, just look out for him. If you see him close, pick him up because he gonna blitz. You never know. You know, he, he he's gonna do it when he's not supposed to do it. He might have have some rules and responsibilities, but he abandons all of it and might try to go yep. at the quarterback. So I think with Adams, you got to do it the same way when you see him down there at the line of scrimmage. You, hey, whoa, 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 adjust for it. But again, practicing was that covered in practice? I don't think so. You know, well, it didn't look like it. It didn't look like it to me because when he came down there, you didn't make the adjustment. Then now you see him on the screen. So now you're trying to run a screen to the left. And so Jamal Adams comes in there and just blows it up. He blitzes from the screen side. Well, mm -hmm. the problem with that is they're so in tune. And this is why our screens never work. Well, rarely work because they don't block the protection first. They're just so used to, all right, I'm going to go out there ah, ah, and then try to get into my, my, my responsibilities. Well, the key to blocking a screen is blocking the protection first. And if yep. you would have blocked the protection, then you would have sent Jordan out there to block the widest guy, slide the line, and then you get out into your progression. But because you're so, you know, programmed to just say, all right, hey, you know, one, two, and then you count the two, and then now you, you go – one Mississippi, two Mississippi, okay, I'm gone now. And you good, get out into your route, get out into your responsibilities, but you don't block the protection. Here comes the blitz off the side, boom, sack. There you go. Your quarterback, Carson, went sacked six times, hit another 12 times. This man has been sacked 46 times this season. I feel bad for him. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 feel, I feel bad. I really do. I, I mean, I, and, I do, and I honestly believe – that's part of the reason why he's missing receivers, he's overthrowing people, is because he's been – every time he snaps the ball, the potential of pop, 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 getting hit is there. I think he's gunshot. I think he's complete. I think his confidence is completely shattered. I think he's gunshot. And I think in some cases, like when he took off and run against Seattle, he said, you know what, forget it. 
I'm just going to do this myself. Nobody going to help me? I'll do it myself. Yeah, I do it myself. I mean, he's been sacked 46 times. He's been hit 111 times. I mean, 111 times. That is taking a beating. Yeah. That is taking a beating. You, you know, still have five games to go. You still got five games to go. You still got yeah. five games to go. Even when he came back in 2018, what he was sacked 31 times and only played 11 games. You know, yeah. so here you are again. You know, 11 games in, 46 46 sacks, man. That that's that's you know that 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 is just really taking a licking, man. And I mean, and some of these hits are coming from defensive tackles. You know, diving on him and, and, and taking some big hits to the chest. And, yes. you know, he keeps dusting himself off and getting up and coming back forward. Um, Doug Peterson's play calling has been in question for weeks. No play more defines what in the world is he thinking when they had a chance to get a field goal to get within eight. Oh, no. He decides to go for it on what it could have been, what should have been a chip shot field goal. He decides to go for it. What's the next thing that happens? Pick. Yeah. Series over. Momentum over. Um, Doug was asked again about giving up play calling, and he is very hesitant. Um, and somebody used the word resistant, and he goes, whoa, 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 that's a little harsh. He took offense to somebody saying he is resistant to giving up play calling. Mm -hmm. He keeps telling us it's something he loves to do, and he says uh, giving up play calling is not off the table, but basically that's telling me I'm not giving it up. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're truly honest with yourself, and I don't think Doug is at this point, wouldn't you consider at least having another mind come in there and make, hey, Doug, let me, let me try this. Let, you know, you've been doing this for, for 10 games. Let, let me try this a little bit, Doug. Even if only for a series. Mm -hmm. Only for a series. Who would you have do it? I know we've talked about this. I don't care at this point. I don't care if it's a, a concession vendor. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's a trainer. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if it's one of the cheerleaders. Somebody, just anybody with a different perspective right now. Yeah, you know, and I and I think Doug just says that just to kind of get everybody off of him a little bit, like, hey, it's on the table. But um, I don't think that he's going to gear that up. I think that that's something that he has identity to it. He feels like that's what he does. I don't know who he would mm -hmm. give that responsibility to, but you're going to give that responsibility to Press Taylor? Give him to Marty Morningwig. Just for a series. Is Marty, is Marty Morningwig even on the sideline during these games? So, I don't, I don't well, know. usually, you know, they can sit up in the well, booth. Br well, bring him to the sideline. Hey, he can sit up in the booth and still call the plays. I mean, it is what it is. But to me, you know, you don't have – this offense doesn't have an, an identity. You know, um, the plays don't marry each other. I mean, you know, some of the run plays that you don't, don't set up for uh, play action to the other side. So – and then they give away the game plan anytime they do a press conference before the week before. Like, they're going to say, hey, man, I'm going to get Carson out of the pocket a little bit more. So what do they do? They tell their defensive ends to stay disciplined on the backside, jet upfield. Mm -hmm. Because if they try to do a little play action and roll him out, he's going to come right back to you. And you saw that happen a couple times against Seattle where he tried to run something to get him outside of the pocket where the defensive end was disciplined and stayed upfield. And then there you go. That crushes that. Mm. And while we're on the subject of Doug, um, early in the game, Carson Wentz, incompletion, incompletion, incompletion. Jalen Hurts comes in. Everybody's anticipating. We heard that Jalen Hurts' role could be more expanded for this game. Jalen Hurts comes in. First pass, six-yard completion, Alshon Jeffrey. Jalen Hurts taken out of the game. Yeah. Why not let that man keep going just to see what he could do that series? Why not let him keep going? Because they don't want it. They just got over this quarterback controversy. I mean, you just, you, you, I mean, you, well, they brought it on themselves with, with, um, with, the, with, with drafting Hurts in the second round. I mean, you, you just got over the Nick Foles thing. So now if you bring Jalen Hurts in, who's thrown three passes and has three completions. I mean, right now, I mean, you know, that's pretty good. Let that man go. Just, <laughs> just, let's find out if he's an NFL quarterback, at least for a series. But, then, but then now you're going to have to have the question, what if he goes out there and just lights, the, lights it on fire? At What's this point, so what? At this point, so what? So be it. <laughs> okay. So be it. All right. So then they're going to have to answer all the questions of, oh, my God, has Carson lost his job? You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to run with Hurts? I mean, you know, 
it, they shouldn't have drafted him this high anyway, but they did. You put this controversy in there, and now here you are. And then everybody's, when is he going to play? When is he going to play? When is he going to play? And you keep mm. asking these questions. And then you put Jalen in, and he had the one completion. Then he yeah. had you, you threw Jalen in, I think, one other time. And yeah. I'm not sure what happened, but then Carson comes in and gets sacked right after it. So, you know, it's – and to me, you know, when you practice him, because you had a false start that one time, so it was a false start because his cadence is different. And yep. like, you don't realize, like, all right, his cadence might be a little different. The timing of it is off. And then you get a false start, and then, bam, there you go. Hey, Carson, get back in the game. Sack. So, you know, you, you got to make a choice in what, you, what you're going to do. But I think they make, they doing it right now just so that they can all, don't have to deal with the, the, the controversy that's going to come behind it. Let's go to the defense. And we won't, we won't spend a lot of time on the defense because I thought the defense – played a pretty good game. I mean, you hold Seattle to 23 points. You played a pretty good game. They didn't run up and down the field on you. They had a few okay runs. They didn't run up and down the field on you. But for the most part, I thought they were rock solid. So I'm putting this loss in offense. But I, I got to give kudos to the defense because they came to play. Yeah, they did. They came to play. They came out there. They played with a lot of energy. They came out there and had some, some, some big stops. I mean, you know, I thought that they came out and played with a lot of pop. It's just um, Jim Schwartz didn't do them any favors by uh, talking to uh, Metcalf before the game. But why would you not give Darius Slade more help over the top? Because Metcalf owned him the whole game. Yeah, he had his way with him. I mean, you know, it was uh, – and I know you say, all right, Slade, hey, man, you big play, Slade. You get the money for it. We're paying you to be that shutdown corner. Metcalf just wasn't having it. No, no. Met no. Metcalf wasn't having it. And, 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 and I know Slade is not going to be the type of player to like, hey, man, I need some help. You know, because, you know, I, you know, hey, hey, ho, ho, ho. Help over here. Need a little help over here. They not, he's not going to do that. So I think as a coach, again, sometimes you got to protect your own players and just say, hey, look, man, you know what? You're struggling a little bit over there with him. We're just going to slide a little something over there, over there to you. You know, and it don't have to look like much, but just, again, just a little something over there every now and then just so that you're not on the island like that. Hey, people out there discussing this now, Doug Peterson. Do you think he'll finish out the season if it continues to go like this? Because, honestly, I don't know from a personal standpoint. I don't know if they're going to win another game this year. Now, I'm not – obviously, Green Bay, New Orleans. I don't care if Taysom Hill is quarterback in that team. New Orleans with that defense, hmm. you know they're coming after Carson. After that, you got to go to Arizona, face that kid, Kyler Murray, and DeAndre hmm. Hopkins, Larry Fitzgerald, and all them guys. Now, then you got Dallas after that. I'm, I don't know if they can beat Dallas. I'm telling you right now, and I'm willing to bet you some money on it, they're not beating Washington the way their defense is playing down in Washington right now. No, no. Does, does, does Doug Peterson finish out this season? No, I, I think he will finish out the season. I don't think you're going to fire the person that brought this city his first Super Bowl um, in the middle of the season like that. I think you'll let him go ahead and finish it out, and, you know, you'll make a decision once the season's over with. But I, I don't see them firing him. Um, in the middle of the season like that, you know, well, not in the middle, but, you know, with games left on, on the season, you know, I think yeah. you'll go ahead, you just suck it up and just say, all right, it is what it is. We're going to take our lumps right now, and then we'll make a decision once this season over with. But I don't see this team winning any more games either just because of how they're playing. And, then, you know, and, 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 you, and I think that you're going to continue to see more guys just go ahead and check on that. All right. So they have a short week now. They go from uh, losing to Seattle, and by the way, they have now scored only 17 points in three consecutive games. They now head to Lambeau Field to face that man, Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers right now is in a zone, 33 touchdowns and only four interceptions. And the thing is, you know Devontae Adams is his leading pass catcher, but their tight ends are an integral part of the offense, and their tight ends are running wide open up and down the field. Who's yeah. covering Green Bay's tight ends on this team? Yeah, I don't know. I thought that our linebacker play was a lot better against Seattle. So, you know, maybe you get some of these linebackers that can get out there and get on them. Uh, you're going to put Mills down there on one of these tight ends. So who knows, you know. It's... But you know what, this team, you know, what was that last year? They came out there and they battled against Green Bay. Was it last and year? And they beat them. And, uh, yeah. and they beat Green Bay. Devontae Adams got hurt in that game. And mm -hmm. it was a close game. Green Bay was driving. And uh, Rodgers threw a pick at the goal line and helped the Eagles win that game. Um, yeah, but you're right. There's a possibility they could win this game. Possibility. And let me emphasize again, possibility. Slim yeah, nah. and none. At this nah, point. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I don't, I, I don't either. 
So yeah. how, how bad? How, so how bad do you think it's going to be? Give me a score for Green Bay and the Eagles this coming Sunday. I don't know. We haven't gotten out of the teens yet, so I'm thinking what? What we'd be Ooh. right around? Yeah. And I'm oh, by the way, Green Bay scoring oh 30, 31 points again. Yeah, we're not getting out of the teens again. Yeah, no. 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 You, you don't think so? No. no. Okay. All right. No, All right. We're, I'm telling you. I mean, we just old enough to get a get a driver's license, man. We we at driver's license age. That's all we're doing right now. Wow. Yeah, in New Jersey, wow. you got to be 17 to get a driver's license. That's what we are right now. We, we're driving without a permit. All right, know? give me one thing that you'll be watching closely on that, for that, in that game on Sunday between Green I wanna and look Eagles. At, I want to see a little bit more out of JP, man, at that right guard position. I felt like, you know, when I go back and watch the film, yeah, there were some, some times that he got beat, you know, but, you know, there were a couple times where I was like, all right, JP, I think that if you had a little bit more time at it, maybe you could, it could be something that, that you could do, but, you know, I, I want to see more about this offensive line. I mean, are you going to allow your quarterback to continue to get destroyed? All right. Well, on that note, on. that brings – Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what, what? what? We got to talk about your Manscaped. What about it? What? Yeah, don't act like that. You got your Manscaped package. Come on, man. Don't no, talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Hey, 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 look here. The package came in the mail uh, uh-huh. uh, uh, on Tuesday. Okay. And I, okay. I didn't know it. I didn't know it. And, and my uh-huh. wife said uh, – she goes, hey – What's this thing you got ordered from Manscaped? I said, I ain't ordered anything. And I said, it hit me. I uh-huh. said, uh, I said, uh, Manscaped, because of one of the sponsors of Grilling the Birds, uh, Trey Thomas is a spokesman for Manscaped. And he had been promising me for weeks that I was going to get a kit. Uh-huh. So my wife's sit, wife sitting there looking through the kit, looking at this, that, and the other. And she goes, are you going to try it? I'm like, I, I got to build up the courage for this. I ain't tried it yet, man. I'm sorry. I, I, okay. Hey, look. It's a, it's a mindset thing, man. I I, I gotta. I'm just saying. I, just treat, I gotta work. Yourself. I gotta work some guards, you know. Treat, treat yourself. Treat yourself, man. You know, go ahead and pull out the lawnmower 3.0. Get you a good shave. You know, put some little ball deodorant down there, man. Then throw the toner in there. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, I'll be, the, look. I don't be walking around. Up. I don't be. I don't be walking around itching all day. He's not gonna itch, man. I'm telling you, it's a good product. It's a great product. It's all vegan. And uh, paraben free. It's a, it's a great product, man. It, and right now, it tends to season. You know, yeah, I, I mean, I, it tends to I, season, I, man. Skip I, I just, for yourself. I just feel a little uncomfortable right now talking about this with you on a on a public platform. I, yeah, I'm just saying. Good. I mean, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's a gift that keeps on giving, man. You know what I'm saying? Go, go ahead, man. Get you some, some get, Go ahead and manscape on up, man. Get yourself dressed up, man. Throw you a Santa Claus hat on, man, and come on in the room. Hey, mama, look at y'all. Look at him. <laughs> Look at what I did to myself. That's it. Cut. Cut. We're done. That's it. I'm done. Hey, look. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us. This guy here has lost his dog on mine, <laughs> but I love him for it. Uh, this brings us to the conclusion of the latest edition of Grilling the Birds, brought to you by Inside the Birds. And by the way, you can see Grilling the Birds on the Inside the Bird podcast and YouTube platforms. I'm going to let this man go because uh, he is out of control right now. And before yeah. we get somewhere where we can't get to the point of no return, <laughs> uh, for my man, Trey Thomas, I'm Derek Gunn. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, please join us again next week when I can't even say we hopefully talk about the Eagles winning Green Bay. I can't even say yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm just hoping I, everybody make it out healthy. Yeah, we just make it out healthy. That's it. Yeah. So until next time, so long, everybody. All right.